All right, in this video, let's run our built application and understand a few more points about pre-rendering with static generation. In the previous video, we built our application using the build npm script, which resulted in the .next folder being created with all the necessary files. Now, to serve our app from this .next folder, we need to run the start script. So in the terminal, run the command yarn start. This runs our built app on localhost port 3000. In the browser, I'm going to open the network tab. And click on empty cache and hard reload. You can see the various resources that are downloaded. The first resource to inspect is this local host. You can see the type is document, which implies an HTML page has been returned from the server. And that is the index.html file from the server pages folder. If you select local host and click on preview, you can see the preview of the HTML page. In the response, you can see the HTML code. Some of the other resources downloaded include CSS code, Webpack code, Framework code, React code, a chunk related to index.js file, and some helper JavaScript files everything you need to render the index.js page in our application. What I do want to point out though, is the fact that code related to users.js file is not downloaded. Back in VS Code, within the static chunks folder, we do see users chunks, but they're not downloaded when you visit the home page because Next.js knows that there is simply no way for the user to navigate to the user's page from the index page. Of course, you can navigate to users directly from the address bar. So localhost 3000 slash users. And now you can see the document downloaded is the users.html page in the server folder. And for the client side JavaScript, the users chunk is downloaded. So if we navigate to the root of our website, the index page and its chunks are downloaded. If we navigate to slash users from the URL, the users page and its chunks are downloaded. I want you to remember this before we proceed to the next point, which is probably the main takeaway from this video. Back in VS Code, in the index page, I'm going to add a link to the users page. So at the top, import the link component and for the JSX, wrap it in a fragment and after the heading, we're going to add a link to the users page. So link, the text is users and the href on link is slash users. In the terminal, I'm going to rebuild our app with the yarn build command. Once the build completes, run yarn start. If you now navigate to slash users in the browser, so refresh, the resources downloaded remain the same. We have users.html and the users chunk file. However, let's navigate to the root. So localhost 3000, and I'm going to empty cache and hard reload. On page load, we see the user's link. Nothing too fancy in the UI, but it does have an effect in the network tab. The HTML page downloaded is still the index.js page of our application. However, you can now see that the users.json file and a user's chunk is downloaded as well. The advantage of this is that 
when we do navigate to user's route from the link, the UI is rendered instantaneously without having to fetch any additional resources from the server. So if I clear the network tab and go to users, you can see there is no network request. And this is the default behavior in Next.js. Any link component in the viewport, initially or through scroll, will be prefetched by default, including the corresponding data for pages using static generation. This is how the page load time is faster. But I'm guessing you now have a very important question in your mind. Isn't static generation generation of HTML in advance? Shouldn't the users.html file be downloaded when we navigate to slash users from our link in the home page? Well, the answer is no. If we go back to VS Code and take a look at users.html in the server folder, you can see the page has all the necessary HTML including the JSON data. But this page is only served when you directly navigate to slash users from the address bar. So back in the browser, if we navigate to slash users, empty cache and reload, you can see that the document downloaded is the users.html file. However, if we navigate to the root, empty cache and hard reload, and navigate to slash users from a different route, only the JSON file along with the JavaScript chunk is prefetched. These files are then used to build this UI client side. And this is the most important point to keep in mind. When a page with get static props is pre-rendered at build time, in addition to the page HTML file, Next.js generates a JSON file holding the result of running get static props. The JSON file will be used in client-side routing through next link or next router. When you navigate to a page that's pre-rendered using get static props, Next.js fetches the JSON file pre-computed at build time and uses it as the props to create the page component client-side. This means that client-side page transitions will not call get static props as only the exported JSON is used. Now I know that was a lot to absorb, but let me summarize what we have learned so far. Static generation is a method of pre-rendering where the HTML pages are generated at build time. Static generation can be done with and without external data. To use external data, get static props function has to be exported from the page. HTML, JavaScript, and a JSON file containing the external data are generated. And here is the important bit. If you navigate directly to the page route, the HTML file is served. If you navigate to the page route from a different route, the page is created client side using the JavaScript and JSON prefetched from the server. There is no additional request to the server. Now I understand if this concept is a bit difficult to wrap your head around. If you're slightly confused, I highly recommend you rewatch the past few videos, run the same code on your local machine, and I guarantee you'll have a much better understanding of static generation in Next.js. My intention is to explain not just the what, but also the why. Why are we writing the code we write? And why are things happening the way they're happening? Hopefully, I've helped you regarding that. All right, thank you all for watching. And if you're finding the videos helpful, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all in the next video.